I personally ride my bike to work, and that's my, my global warming effort, pretty much. That's basically all I can do at this point. I grew up in Chicago, and you had snow from October till March. I'm not sure they had snow last year, so I absolutely we're having global change, whether it's warming or cooling. Line of sight. It's incredible. Now this glacier seems massive, but in many ways it has a lot in common with the ice cube that's sitting in a glass of water at room temperature. Mendenhall is melting. While the runoff from the mountains makes for some beautiful views, the land you see now was completely covered in ice just five years ago. As we travel to the Tracy Arm Fjord onto South Sawyer Glacier, change here, you'll notice, is decidedly more dramatic. This is how icebergs are born. It's part of the natural process of tidewater glaciers reaching the sea. Only at glaciers like South Sawyer, this process has been happening much more frequently, resulting in a loss of one mile of ice in just the last five years. The warming that we're seeing is most pronounced at high northern latitudes. These NASA movies show just how fast this part of the world is changing. Temperatures are rising 3 to 8 degrees in just the last 30 years, and Arctic sea ice continues thinning. While the winter months allow some of the ice to recover, it continues to get thinner over time. Normally the ice is very reflective and keeping some of the heat out. So if you were to melt even a thin layer of ice and expose ocean, that dark ocean is going to absorb even more. With less ice covering the ground, acting like a giant mirror, reflecting away incoming solar energy, the land here is warming, accelerating the retreat of tidewater glaciers like Mendenhall and South Sawyer. Warming in Greenland has resulted in county-sized chunks of ice breaking away, some 40 miles long in a stunning display seen clearly from space. There's been other studies that have showed that the Arctic ice is melting faster than we thought, and also there's projections that maybe some ice on Greenland or Antarctica, some of the ice shelves, might go away faster than we thought. And if something like that was to happen, then sea level would change quite quickly. So why is melting ice in Alaska and the Arctic important to California or even the rest of the world? As we know too well, any time there's a slight change in temperature or pressure pattern in the Pacific Ocean, our weather here can change dramatically. El Nino powers up wetter than average winters, often leading to more flooding across central and southern California. La Nina, on the other hand, is largely responsible for drier and cooler years over our part of the west coast. Now back to Alaska. Could melting ice here lead to a long-term or even permanent adjustment to global weather patterns? The answer lies in the thermohaline circulation. So the thermohaline circulation is this, this giant conveyor belt of ocean currents like the Gulf Stream that goes up Atlantic and goes into Northern Europe, that's part of this thermohaline circulation. And it goes all around the world, delivering warm water to the north and cold water to the equator. Some model projections show that that thermohaline circulation may slow down in the future, that if there's a lot of melting of Arctic uh, ice, that will put a lot of fresh water into the Atlantic and disrupt that circulation. And that could cause climates to shift in different places. Shifting climates may mean more unusual swings in temperature and precipitation, like the recent cool, mild summer we just experienced across much of California. More extreme weather could also become more likely. Coming up, what does sea level rise and climate change mean for life in California and the Bay Area? So let's say we have a one-foot rise in sea level. Um, that will really affect people when there's storms. And is this what California's future looks like? We'll take you on a tour of Google's Liquid Galaxy. Mm -hmm. 